Scarecrows were originally kept on farms to stop the birds from eating the crops. But today, we're creating a charming scarecrow using a face paint design. Here's what you'll need. Rosy blush, some water, face paints, something to mix the face paints on, red lipstick, art brushes, makeup brushes, and today, I'm gonna to be using a model. Here's Paige. Let's start with a scarecrow's nose. I'm gonna paint it orange. Grab your art brush, dip it in some water, and to create orange, I'm just mixing yellow and red together. Create an egg shape on the nose with a point facing up. <laughs> when the orange face paint is dry, we want to create some black stitching all around it. To do that, we're going to grab a clean, finer tip art brush, dip it in the black face paint, and just create a few small lines. This is going to create a stitching effect. With the same black paint and art brush, draw on two X's at the end of the eyebrow. We want to have that same stitching effect on the mouth. So to do that, do small vertical lines. Now grab your powder brush and dip in your rosy red blush, adding a circle on each cheek. Cheeks. And to finish off the look, we're just going to add a red lip. And there you have it. There's your farm friendly scarecrow. It's ready to go. about art is there's no limitations. I've just come out of the art gallery in Melbourne and I've spotted the weirdest sculpture. It's made up of different parts of animals with a human head. And I'm about to meet my friend Rosie to explain it all to me. Hi Rosie. Now I just saw a sculpture called Guardian Spirit. Explain everything. Okay, so that would be our Guardian Spirit from China that was made in the year 700. We have the wings of a bird the ears of an elephant, the body of a leopard or a lion, and the legs of an ox. And these animals were chosen because they were very powerful figures. The job of the guardian spirit was to ward off evil spirits so they couldn't get into the tomb. So why is the head white but the body all colourful? Well, the actual head would have been quite colourful originally. Because the sculpture is so old, the natural pigments that would have been on the face a long time ago have disappeared. They were so advanced with their glazing techniques, the beautiful green and ochre colours and the cream colours that you can see on the sculpture are actually still there and wow. quite brilliant as they would have been back in the year 700. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much, Rosie. You understand now? OK. Well, shall we go inside and create our own guardian spirit? Oh, that sounds great. Stay with us. It's coming up later in the show. Carving a pumpkin has been a Halloween tradition for generations. But this year, I'm going to make my own tradition by drawing a Halloween pumpkin creature guy. So here's what you need. Paper, an eraser, a pencil, a black marker, and some coloured pencils. So this is the pumpkin creature that we're going to end up with. You can see he has two curvy long arms and two curvy long legs and a big pumpkin head. So we're going to start by drawing the body. Start with a pencil. 
draw the head first, it's a big oval shape on its side. Once you've done that, we'll go into the neck. We're just drawing the basic outline of the creature first and then we'll get into details. So two straight lines from the bottom of that shape for the head. They can be quite close together. Moving on to the left arm, you're going to follow from the side of that neck and bend a line around and bring it in line with the top of that oval shape. To finish the arm, run a line just underneath that one and taper it in towards the end. Now we're going to draw the hat that's in his hand. And I want you to draw a long oval shape. And then in the centre of that, a curved line that takes up the centre of that shape. Then either side of that line, two straight lines go straight up and you can join those with another curving line, just slightly curved down towards the rest of the hat. Then join that up and you've got another little oval shape on top. Then at the bottom, we're just going to draw another curved line to create a band. To draw the fingers, just continue drawing that top line of the arm. And then for the top finger, just a jutting out sort of curved triangle shape. And now moving across to do his right arm. This one's going straight out, but it's kind of got a dip in it. And then follow that one, just like we did on the other side, underneath it. Now for the hand, you want to pop a triangle shape just at the bottom there. And then above that, two curving triangle shapes for the fingers. Now we're going to do the body and the legs. Starting at the top of the neck, you're going to bring a continuous line that curves down and around to the side there, ending just in line with the side of the pumpkin head. And we're just going to follow that line back up to create the leg, about halfway down that line. You can draw a little line across here, that's where the body is going to end. And then from the other side of the neck, we're going to draw a line down to meet that part of the body. Now onto the second leg, you're just going to follow a line from the side of the body and curve it out and up because he's kind of making a skipping motion. Follow that line again from the centre of the body, again tapering it in at the end. Now quickly for the feet, we just need two little triangles at the ends of the legs. Time to draw the big leaf that's sitting behind him. So we're going to draw a big circle just behind his torso. Find the centre of your leaf and put a little indent just in the middle there, and then two triangular shapes coming down. Then circle up to the side. So the leaf is going to come up and around. It's going to dip on either side and then come up in the middle. The stem is going to be a curvy line. So you can just curl it a couple of times and then join it up underneath the foot. Now we're just going to follow that line alongside to get the width of the stem. Then add a little stem up the top of the head. It's just a short curving triangle. Now it's time for the details on the face. We're going to start by drawing these kind of pumpkin panels to get the shape of the face. Start in the centre by drawing a kind of curved eye shape on its side and then keep drawing those lines out but they'll get closer together as they get further apart. Draw some short curves between those lines on the top and bottom. For the eyes, two triangles pointing outwards with two smaller triangles in the middle. The mouth is a big smile with triangles for the teeth. All right, now that we've got our creature dude, we just want to go over with an eraser and erase any of the lines that we don't want, especially the ones that are intersecting. Now with your black pen, go over all the lines that are left. When your pen is dry, erase all the pencil marks. Now it's time to colour. I'm going to make the leaf green. His body is going to be a dark purpley colour and I'm going to match the band on his hat to his body. And I'm colouring in his mouth and his hat black. orange and yellow and I'm pressing harder with the orange on the edges of the panels and then I'm going over it with yellow in the middle. pumpkin creature. And the best thing about this carved pumpkin is that no pumpkins were hurt during the filming of this drawing. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Kat and I'm a nail artist. It can be tricky picking just one colour, but you don't have to. I'll show you how to section off your nails with multiple colours. What you're going to need is a pink, a purple, a silver glitter nail polish, some cotton pad, some nail polish remover, a thin nail art brush, a base coat, a top coat and a model. This is Monique. So first I'm going to clean the nail with some cotton pad and some nail polish remover. Apply a base coat to the nail. This primes and protects the nail. And let it dry before you add your next colour. The first nail polish colour that I'll be using is this silver glitter. And I'm going to apply that all over the nail bed. Just going to wait for the first layer to dry. I'm cheating by using a fan. Now it's dry enough for the second coat. And allow it to dry. So I'm dipping the thin brush into the pink and doing a line across and then I'm just going to fill in that whole section. For this look, it's all about the brush. So I'm not using the thick one from the nail polish, I'm using a thin nail art brush. And allow it to dry. So the last colour I'm using is a purple. Using the thin nail art brush, I'm gonna draw a triangle at the bottom of the nail and then I'm gonna fill it in with a purple. Finally, we're finishing it up with a top coat. Top coat makes it last longer and gives it a shiny finish. You can try this with any colour, pattern or design you like. Hi, my name is Jason Brass. I'm the head of wardrobe for Cirque du Soleil's Cusa. We pride ourselves on making some of the most beautiful costumes in the world, but they also have to be some of the most functional costumes in the world, because we have acrobats flying through the air, doing tricks, climbing ropes. So we keep constantly busy here at Cusa because everything needs to be checked over all the time. We restyle all the wigs, touch up the makeups, uh, paint the shoes. We do everything here in wardrobe. Well, I started at uh, the age of 14 in theater. I was working for a small theater company in St. Petersburg, Florida, which I'm from. And I fell in love with theater, so I moved into costume design and technology at North Carolina School of the Arts. And then about five years into my career of doing opera and TV and film, a friend of mine called me and said, hey, would you like to join Cirque du Soleil? Here I am 16 years later. So there's so many rewarding things I have about my job. I get to travel the world and see the world. But one of the best things about the job is when I get to go sit in the public and watch the show. I look at the costumes, make sure they look good. Then I get to look at the reaction of the public. Watching somebody transform the way they think about theater because they're coming to see a circus. It's one of the most precious things that I've ever been able to experience. There's always uh, something that can go wrong, or what we think is wrong, but actually comes out for the better uh, overall image or costume or production or anything. A lot of mistakes are made, but mistakes can be gems, hidden treasures, and we run with those. 
So here are a couple of our examples of our headpieces here at Kusa. This is the trickster who opens the show, and his hat takes about 60 hours to make. It's all an actual foam sculpture on the inside covered with fabric. So we have artisans in Montreal who have to shape all the foam to get it to be exactly the specifications of the design from the designer, as well as pulling bases to make sure it's light, comfortable, and flexible for him to tumble in. Here's another example of a, one of our headpieces. This is the chorus line from our skeleton looks. These are actually worn with their head here, so they feel like they're much taller as an artist. This is one of my favorite costumes. This is the crooner costume for the opening of Act Two. Uh, inspiration was Day of the Dead of Mexico. The jacket, there are 1,890 rhinestones that are all set by an artisan in Montreal. And our job is to maintain the look to make sure it is perfect for every show. These are one of our Red Army costumes. Uh, there are over 450 flaps that are individually sewn on. So each one is done on a base, and it's done on an ultra suede that's washable, but yet we go in and alter it and foil each one to give it the high gloss so it looks like a uh, tin soldier's army uniform. Our fabrics do become heavy and quite cumbersome. So we do have our little tricks to make sure that the artist is comfortable. But there are, unfortunately, some that are just heavy and hot. We actually have to take some of our costumes and weigh them, say, like a headpiece, to make sure that it's safe for the artist to work in. Here's another one of our costumes for Hakuza. This is one of our contortion costumes, based off of the painter Klempt. So it's a very inspiring costume. It also has to be very functional and durable. These gold chains are actually elastic, so they stretch to keep the artist safe. Same with the jewels. The jewels are actually made of silicone to keep the artist safe, and there's no sharp edges. Hey, Sasha. Oh, no, no. Help me, Jason. Absolutely. We'll go ahead and fix this and get it ready for you, OK? OK. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Cheers. So here at Kuza, we have a lot of repairs and alterations to do. So we're going to go ahead and take care of this to make sure that this artist is safe for tonight's show. Probably, yes, because we're mammals, they're mammals, so most most of them are, for sure. So they would ha have the same thinking, they would think just like us. Whether they appreciate it or not, it doesn't really matter, because they won't fully interpret it, because, for example, elephants, they can paint, but they might not realise they're painting. Intelligent mammals in particular, like, um, they would have... Like, their brains are similar size and they have similar ability to ours, maybe a little bit less. I've seen a dog while I was watching something and he was, he was looking at this artwork and sniffing it, so I don't know if that's appreciating it, but... <laughs> Probably murals, mm -hmm. like, very abstract. They yeah. wouldn't ha I don't think they'd have the finesse. Um, and I feel like it's something that they'll structurally feel rather than think of it as art. Earlier, Rosie from the National Gallery of Victoria taught me all about the artwork, the guardian spirit, which is a composite creature made up of all different parts of animals. Is that right? That's right. Brilliant. And now we're going to make our own. Yes, we are. How do we do that? OK, well, a great thing to do at the gallery is to walk around and look at all the different paintings and sculpture that feature animals, to look at the different body parts of those animals. If you take your, the ideas of what you see and draw those different body parts, then you can put them together to create your own guardian spirit. So it might be the wings of the sirens in a Ulysses painting, or it might be the body of the dog in the Tiepolo painting. Oh, how exciting. OK, so I've started this artwork. Here is the head of a lion that I looked at earlier. This is the body of a fish. Here's some wings that I actually looked at an eagle to get my ideas. And so now what I'd like you to do is to come up with some horns. Okay. I'm going to make the feet 
of eagles. OK, let's get started. Don't be afraid. There's no rules. The crazier it looks, the better it is. Okay, let's cut it out. Okay. So what kind of guardian spirit do you think he would be? I think he's very powerful, but I also think he's kind. I think he has a very kind face. So he's a goodie. I think so too. <laughs> So now all we have to do is actually stick it down and we'll have a wonderful artwork to remind us of our time at the gallery. Thanks, Rosie. I think he looks like a Travis. What do you think? 